The Recreator MK5 Kit Ender 3 Do-It-Yourself Build Notes Designed and built by Joshua R. Taylor Strip down pet recycle plastic bottles, convert it into new usable filament. Load up your favorite 3D printer and recreate. Welcome to the Recreator 3D MK5 Kit Ender 3 Build. In this build, we'll be converting an Ender 3 3D printer into a Recreator 3D, a PET number no. 1 filament protruder unit which strips and converts soda bottles into usable 3D printing filament. The MK5 kit was created with the intentions to work with almost any 3D printer board to run it. In this build, we'll be using an Ender 3 as it's the most popular and easier printer to find inexpensively. Going through the start of the written manual, You'll find the information on all the parts and tools you'll need to buy or print in order to build the MK5 kit. Please read everything in order, as you may have an item on hand that you won't have to buy otherwise. Please follow along and shortly you'll be recreating your own filament from soda bottles. Also, please consider joining the Facebook group, where there is constant activity among Recreator users and interactions with the creator for future inspirations towards the unit where we can further go down the road with new methods of recycling. Please go to facebook.com slash groups slash recreator 3D. With all the above in mind, let's get started. Step zero, print all the parts. Start by printing out all the parts for the MK5 kit from the top and bottom folders. You'll also need a bottle cutter you can order a plastic bottle and can cutter tool, or you can make the free do-it-yourself community bottle cutter. The parts files to 3D print can be downloaded from here, recreator3d.com slash mk5 kit ender 3 parts. After the parts are printed, add the M4 by 8 mm screws along with the M4 T-nuts for preparation to all the parts. Where the back handle attaches, use the two M4 by 10 mm screws for the proper needed length. We'll attach these screws later. Step 1. Disassemble the head and drill. Be mindful and very careful with the heat block and the thermostat and heater wires. These are delicate wires. The following work can be done with the wires still attached if you trust your skills. They can also be taken off and put back on after the following work. Be advised and do what is best for yourself. These notes will be leaving the wires attached to the block. Again. Take extreme caution in handling these wires so as to not damage them. Start by disassembling the hot end. Remove the PTFE coupler on the top. Remove the nozzle. Remove the two screws holding the heat block to the heat sink. Remove the small grub screw holding the throat to the heat sink. Remove the throat from the heat block. Set the heat sink into a clamp. You'll need the following tools. A drill, a vice clamp, 1 8 to 1 half stepless drill bit for drilling the heat sink, a 1 16th drill bit for the nozzle, drilled to the width of 175 millimeters, using a piece of filament as a proper diameter feeler. With the heat sink upside down, the grub screw hole should be facing down. Drill out the center. Using the thin stepless drill bit, drill until the inside upper lip has been rounded out. Be mindful that the Ender 3's inner wall is thin and can be easily blown out if over drilled. Go slow and stop as soon as this lip is rounded. Set the nozzle into a vise clamp or pliers with the tip downwards. Using the 1 16th drill bit, Drill downwards into the nozzle to form a 1.6 millimeter hole. Continue drilling the nozzle while turning it. Stop to test that the 1.75 millimeter filament can be inserted into the nozzle. Continue to drill until this can happen. Be mindful to not go over the size. You want the 1.75 millimeter filament to be able to just pass through the nozzle. If too loose, your diameter will be above 1.75 millimeter and it will not print properly. Step 2. Reassemble the head. 
Using the screw and nuts from the support plate, mount the plate onto the Ender 3 mount, printed from PETG. The wheels can be used with the MK5 spooler dual geared spooler mount, as well as the community bottle cutter. This can save the option of buying them individually. Use the two M3 by 14 screws, mount the heat block to the heat sink. Attach the nozzle. Using the other two M3 by 14 screws, mount the heat sink to the support plate. If using the blower fan for filament cooling, unmount it from the side of the shroud and using the original four screws, attach the parts cooling fan to the printed bracket, Recreator 3D Part 3 Cooling Fan Plate. Make sure the sticker side is facing up with the blower facing down. Step 3. Assemble the bottom build. Attach one of the side handles to the two 2040 rails. Depending on your build, choose the handles that fit your needs. You can attach them to the end if the profiles are tapped with the 4 M5 by 20 or to the sides with M3 by 8 screws and T-nuts if untapped. Attach the two mounts to the power supply using the 6 M4 by 8 millimeter hex screws. Make sure the power supply's connectors are pointed down. With the power supply connectors pointing inwards, slide the power supply mount onto the 2040 profile slot. Push the power supply towards the center temporarily. Attach the second of the side handles to the two 2040 rails. Attach the right and left side legs to the 2040 profile. Attach the right and side legs to the 2040 Looking at the power supply, push it all the way towards the left and align it against the legs. Now add the middle leg. Depending on the length of your power supply, it may align right against the right side of the power supply. But it's suggested to use the case to align the placement of the middle and right legs. Double check the placement of the feet using the case to make sure that they're placed correctly. Attach the Ender 3 board with the 5 M3 by 6 mm hex screws to the board mount. Attach that to the 2040 profile on the right side of the frame. Attach the TPU feet to the legs using the 6 M3 by 12 mm hex screws and 6 M3 nuts. On the right side case LCD, attach the power switch using the 2 M3 by 6 mm hex screws. Attach the LCD to the mount using the four M3 by eight millimeter hex screws. Attach the mount to the front using the four M3 by 16 millimeter hex screws and four M3 nuts. Step four, connect the wires. Connect the power switch wires to the power supply. Connect the Ender 3 board to the power supply, red to V plus and black to V minus. Feed the motor wire, hot end, and fan wires down from the top of the frame through where the middle has a small opening. Connect the motor, heater, thermostat, and fan wires to the Ender 3 board. Attach the LCD screen cable to the Ender 3 board. Attach the power switch to the power supply. Red to L, blue to N, and yellow to ground. Attach the back handle onto the right side and middle of the case using the two M4 by 12 mm hex screws. Attach these combined parts to the 2040 profile as well the left side case. This completes the bottom of the build. Step 5. Complete the top build. With the bottle cutter along with the head and blower fan, these parts can now be mounted to the base frame along the two 2040 rails. Attach the cutter plate towards the right side of the frame. Set the screws and T-nuts in place on the right side of the main screw holding the 2040. Attach the heater block plate with one inch in between the cutter plate. Set the four screws and T-nuts in place on the 2040. Attach the cooling plate about one and a half inches from the heater block plate. Set the two screws and T-nuts in place on the 2040. Combine all parts for part four with the steel HSS rod tool bit or the printed part. Attach the tensioner with one inch in between the cooling fan plate. 
Run the motor wire along the back 2040 rail and tuck it inside the rail. Follow the rail until you reach the motor. Step 6. Motor Spooler Attach the NEMA 17 to the back part of the Recreator Part 5B back motor mount using the four M3 by 8 millimeter hex screws. You'll combine the one M5 by 34 millimeter hex screw with the one palm wheel in between the two M5 washers securing that to the back part of the Recreator 3 Part 5C double gear with the one M5 nut set in the front of the gear. Set this on the back of the 2040 rail. On the front 2040 rail, set the Recreator 3D Part 5A spool holder in place, using the Recreator 3D Part 7A spool rod as a guide for straightness when combined with the back motor mount. Using the Recreator 3D Part 7A spool rod as a guide for straightness, double check that these two parts are straight on the back 2040 rail. Double check that the two screws and T-nuts are in place on the 2040. Step 7. The end of the tunnel. Combine all parts for part 6 spool. It's suggested to use some super glue to hold these parts together when screwed together to form one part. Otherwise the parts can become loose, separate, and bind while the unit is running. Combine all parts for part 7 spool rod. Attach part 6 spool to the spool holder with part 7 spool rod. Setting the spacer towards the back to allow small gear clearance. Lock the rod in place with the part 7 rod nuts. Set the two screws and T-nuts in place on the 2040. Attach the front signage using double sided tape. Step 8. The SD card and preparing to pull. Load the 600mm suggested speed G-code onto the SD card. Load filament into the nozzle. Go to control, temperature, nozzle, and turn to 210C. Go back to the main prompt to watch the heat rise. Load filament to spooler. Go to print from TF and use 600 millimeter suggested pull speed for the MK5 dual gear single motor puller. Until a new manual is written for the Recreator 3D MK5 kit for the Ender 3, please find the following manual for the MK3 Pro which should give you an idea of the overall process of how to get started with the unit at recreator3d.com manual. Congratulations, you've completed the Recreator 3D build. What will you recreate? Thanks for recycling.